OU versus TCU was a game I was really looking forward to because on one side of the aisle, you had the Oklahoma Sooners who just hit a snag last week, and the question needed to be asked, how can the Sooners respond? On the other side, you had TCU who came into this game undefeated, looked across the field, saw an opponent that was ranked, and knew that an opportunity to make a statement presented itself and they wanted to take advantage. However, after the dust is not even finished settling yet as the game is still going, TCU has made their statement as they have poured it on against the Oklahoma Sooners, and Oklahoma really doesn't have an answer. Today, we need to talk about where the Oklahoma Sooners go from here, what went wrong, is TCU a legit threat in the Big 12 and everything in between? But before we can, as always, y'all know the drill. I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes, N for no. Are you surprised at how this game went down? And then let me know, do you think TCU is a team to watch in the Big 12? I can't wait to hear from you. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed this content, be sure to like and comment down below. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And look, in the preview, we talked about this being a game I was really looking forward to. TCU came into this game with a high-powered offense, several talented wide receivers, and Duggan had been playing some really high-quality football. TCU's offense has been displaying a high-powered, proficient offense that's able to hurt defenses, and I was interested to see how Oklahoma's defense would respond after Kansas State hurt them last week. Fast forward, and TCU was able to win in pretty much well every facet of this game. Because one of the areas I talked about if you were Oklahoma is you wanted to be able to dictate the pace of this game, especially with TCU having as high-powered of an offense as they did. However, TCU was really able to dictate this game. When Oklahoma entered their three-man fronts, TCU ran with relative ease. And I mean, right now, as we're sitting here, TCU's averaging over 10 yards per carry on the ground, and they're doing it from several different guys. Even Max Duggan, who's not a super mobile quarterback, not saying he doesn't have the ability to hurt a defense with his legs. He certainly does. He's an athletic guy. But he's not Adrian Martinez on the ground. He's well over 100 yards on the ground rushing and averaging over 20 yards per carry. So they were able to take advantage of opportunities that presented themselves in the rushing game. So Oklahoma's defense for back-to-back -back weeks has had a tough outing. And look, one thing we need to understand is the Brent Venables defense is a complicated defense and communication is going to be key. And if there's miscommunication, you're going to have busted coverages, missed assignments, bad gap discipline, things that we've seen, but that's an indication that there's still learning going on. We also need to understand that maybe many, including myself, maybe overestimated how close Oklahoma was. Because this defense is going to take a while to learn, and I think TCU and Kansas State proved that there's still a ways to go for the Oklahoma Sooners defensively. Oklahoma came into this game ranked 62nd in the nation in total defense, and I don't know where they're going to rank after this because TCU was able to win in every facet of the game. If we look at TCU's offense, it's just been more of this dangerous offense that we've come to expect from the running game, from the passing game. They're firing on all cylinders, which makes them a team to watch. They have some real mismatches on the outside. Whether we're talking about Quinton Johnston, whether we're talking about Gunnar Henderson, Barber, they have several different guys that can take advantage of the matchup and present a real difficult time for the defense. If we flip the script and talk about Oklahoma's offense against TCU's defense, this is where it gets really interesting to me. Because Oklahoma's offense came into this game as a top 10 offense in the nation, and it was interesting because we were going to see two top 10 offenses go head-to-head, -head. so it seemed on paper that offense would be the strength for both of these teams. However, Oklahoma's offense really struggled, and Dylan Gabriel has been missing some throws, and through the early weeks of the season, I'd keep coming on here and saying, hey... It's early, time needs to be had so that he can get chemistry with these wide receivers. At this point, it's time to start asking those questions because some of those throws you just got to make. Sometimes there were drops, sure, but some of those throws you have got to make because as much as the defense has had it taken to them, it's hard to get things going positively on defense if your offense is not able to sustain drives. And for Oklahoma right now, they have got to be able to sustain drives so that they at least give their defense an opportunity to rest and so that they're not on the field the majority of the game. Because it's going to be very hard to stop an offense if they're running play after play after play and your offense isn't able to stay on the field for very long. So OU's offense was never able to get in rhythm. Unfortunately, Dylan Gabriel took a nasty hit and was knocked out of the game. Hopefully he's healthy. Hopefully he's okay. 
glad to see him not come back into this game. Look, at the end of this, where does Oklahoma go from here? First and foremost, you got to go back to the drawing board. It's Oklahoma, several times, was in position to make a play. They just had missed tackle after missed tackle after missed tackle. That's a wanted thing. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, your offense has got to be able to sustain drives. Because if your offense isn't able to sustain drives, it's going to be really hard for your defense to work out the problems they're having because you're going to be putting even more pressure on them. And finally, if you're asking where Oklahoma's defense goes from here, they have to continue learning the defense. They have to continue getting comfortable with what's being asked because on several occasions we saw busted coverage which is an indication of miscommunication. So Oklahoma's got to go back to the drawing board and put some things together. If you're TCU, you're flying real high off of this win because you won in every single facet of the game, offensively, defensively, special teams for the Sooners. Keep building, keep improving, and by the end of the year, show that you're a team that has your future right out in front of you and that there is a palpable reason for excitement. Can't wait to hear from all of you. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what you thought about this. That's it. See you. Thank you.